Greetings, everyone. As you can see to my right, I've got the completed Nautilus here, and I'm really excited to show it to you. Before I do, though, I just want to say thank you to all my subscribers and everyone who is supporting me right now. And if this is your first time watching, I hope you would consider subscribing. I really try hard to put out content as often as I can, and I've got a few exciting projects on the way. So anyways, let's jump into the Nautilus. So in the previous video, I had just completed doing all the electronic work on the interior and getting all the interior painted. Once I had that all installed inside the submarine, I ended up using JB Weld's two-part epoxy to glue the upper and lower halves together of the, of the hull. I, rec I figured I would need something extremely strong since these are two very large and heavy pieces of resin. And so far, it hasn't disappointed. All the other pieces were put on just using super glue. The paint process was rather lengthy and required multiple layers. I first primed everything with my go-to Rust-Oleum 2 times coverage black. This was followed up by a coat of Rust-Oleum, <clears throat> excuse me, Rust-Oleum silver out of the spray can. I then used my airbrush and thinned down Vallejo black to about 50% thinner, 50% paint, and went over all of the rivet lines. This gave it a really interesting look that I really liked. After that, I used a special product right here called Modern Masters Metal Effects Oxidizing Iron Paint. And basically what this is, is it's, a, it's kind of a really thick paste that has iron filings in it. And when exposed to something like vinegar, it rusts. Um, so I ended up applying that all over the submarine and allowing it to rust up in a somewhat realistic and natural way. Once that was all applied, I then went back in and, and cleaned up some of the rust where it, it was obviously not meant to be and, and kind of toned it down a little bit. And then I went in and started applying some oil washes. You can see some of the streaking effects here on the front of the hull. I applied some additional pieces of darker rust uh, in strategic locations and generally just kind of gave this a good grimy look. Once that was done, I oversprayed the entire model with Citadel's Agrax Earthshade Wash. This actually sprays really well through the airbrush and is very translucent, so I was able to, to tint the overall color of the submarine to this kind of copperish brown color that you see here. Um, all of the clear parts were applied, the windows for the pilot house, the eyebrow lights, and then the, the main salon window and the lights surrounding it. The roll bar around the salon light, I actually ended up having to replace since the part that was provided in the kit had shrunk and no longer fit and was quite honestly pretty terribly cast. So I made a new one out of lead solder. I used, I ended up using solder because it was extremely easy to manipulate and, and bend to the compound shapes that I needed and it was just easy to work with and I think the result is pretty good looking. Um, like I said in the past, this is motorized. There's two switches on the back side of the, the submarine here, one that turns on the lights, and then one that turns on the motor. There we go. And um, as I said before, this is a commission build. Uh, this will be sitting in the client's office, um, basically above their workstation. And so it's always gonna be viewed from this side. The, the other side is painted and weathered. Um, however, it does not have the, the lights surrounding the salon window on the opposite side. That is the only difference. Uh, plus, obviously, there's the switches and then the power outlet as well. Anyways, um, this this was a blast, and this really challenged me, and it was something new for me to tackle in terms of the painting and weathering process. Uh, I really, really enjoyed figuring these things out and trying to make it all work. So it's been fun. And uh, I really appreciate you guys sticking around and I hope you enjoy these videos. Um, as a quick side note, the, uh, the water backdrop here, I got from a company called trainjunkies.com. Uh, normally they do uh, backdrops for model railroads, but they are essentially a full service printing shop as well. So uh, if you're interested in stuff like that, check them out. I think this is, uh, provides a really nice backdrop to the Nautilus here.